Hi everybody, and welcome back to video number three in chapter 18. And when we left off, we were going to look at how we compute a break-even point when we have more than one product in a company. So we're going to use these CVP formulas that we just went through, but we're going to modify them uh, for use when we sell more than one product. So our unit contribution margin is going to be replaced with a weighted average contribution margin per unit. And then our sales mix is going to be the proportion of sales volume for each of our products. All right, we're going to make some footballs and basketballs here. And we have different selling prices, different variable costs, different uh, contribution margins per unit. We're going to sell 60% of our volume as footballs and 40% as basketballs. So to calculate our weighted average contribution margin per unit, we're going to take the contribution margin per unit for each product and multiply it times the sales mix for each product and then add them together. So we're going to take this $30, multiply it by 60%, and then we're going to add to that this $35 multiplied by 40%. And that comes out $32 per uh, unit. Now, we take our fixed costs, which in this example was $48,000. Um, and we're going to divide that by the $32 weighted average contribution margin per unit that we just calculated. And that gives us 1,500 units. So we take this 1,500 units, multiply it by 60%, and our unit sales of footballs are going to be 900 units, and our unit sales of basketballs are going to be 600 units. And if we multiply that through by the individual contribution margin per units that we have of $30 here and $35 there, we get our total contribution margin for footballs and for basketballs, and they total $48,000. All right. We do have some assumptions when we uh, do a cost volume profit. And we assume that everything can be either a variable or a fixed cost. We know that there are some mixed costs in there, uh, so we know that's not quite always the case. We assume that all the costs are linear within a relevant range. And that's a pretty good assumption I found through the years, um, that it within the relevant range, um, I think, generally speaking, we can assume the cost will be linear, although not perfectly. And then the units produced are sold, so that means that our inventory doesn't go up or down from period to period. It stays at the same constant level. And our sales mix is constant in that last example, 60-40. We know that that sometimes changes as well. So, how do we analyze changes in sales using a degree of operating leverage? I think this is pretty interesting. Here, our degree of operating leverage is a measure of the effects of the change in the level of sales on income. So, watch how this little beauty works. So we're going to take our contribution margin and divide that by our income to get degree of operating leverage. Here, our contribution margin was $36,000, and our income was $12,000. So that gives us a degree of operating leverage of 3. Now, when we change our income, with a percentage here, that's going to take our degree of operating leverage times the change of sales in percentage, 
which was 10% assumed in this example, we'll multiply the 3 times 10% to get 30%. Now, if the sales increase by 10%, watch what happens. Through this, we have 132,000, uh, that's a $12,000 increase. Our variable costs go up from 84,000 to 92,400. Our contribution margin is 39,600 and our fixed costs are 24,000. Our income is now $15,600. Now we can do the same thing for a decrease, but let's look at that for a second. Here, so here we predicted that our 10% change in sales would have a 30% increase in income. And if we take 1.3 times 12,000 we do in fact get 15,600 in this example. Same thing would be true if we decrease sales by 10%. That means that this $12,000 would go down by 30%, giving us $8,400 in income. All right, Excel. To know me is to know we love Excel. <laughs> Here we're using the intercept and slope functions within Excel, and that gives us um, um, how we would estimate costs based on using uh, this technique within, within Excel. Now, uh, we're going to compute the unit cost and income under both absorption and variable costing. And by the way, if I didn't say it, I'm not going to ask you anything on the exam that involves um, uh, regression analysis as we just did with uh, uh, Excel. All right, so we're going to compute unit cost and income under both absorption and variable costing. And here we have our standard contribution margin statement, variable costing, variable costs. The variable costs are going to include, as we know by now, direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead only. Fixed overhead costs are going to be excluded from our product costs. Now, here, we've learned so far absorption costing. And that does include fixed cost. And that's what the generally accepted accounting principles require. But when we're doing variable costing, that's not in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. We use this for management, managing our business. So here, under absorption costing, we have $4, $8, $3, and ten dollars of fixed overhead at total of twenty five dollars but variably we only use the uh, direct materials direct labor and variable overhead for fifteen dollars so what does that mean um here we're going to say our fixed overhead was six hundred thousand dollars so under absorption costing, we're going to use all four of those components. And under variable costing, we're going to use $15 per unit of product cost, but period cost of $600,000 per year. So that means we're not going to reflect the, under absorption costing, we're not going to reflect the cost fixed cost until we actually sell the product. But here, under variable costing, we show those period costs in the period in which they occur. So you'll see what that does. Here, for income reporting, here is our absorption costing statement, and we do 320000 
of income. We use our $25 per unit to come up with our cost of goods sold, and we have a piece of our variable, a piece of our selling and administrative expenses here, um, the 200000 plus $2 for every unit we sell. So a little bit of that is variable, 280000 in total. Now, under variable costing, we our cost of goods sold is at $15 a unit, but we bring that $2 of variable costs up above the contribution margin line, whereas under absorption costing, it's below the gross profit line. So here, we're going to have contribution margin of 920000 and in this case, six below the contribution line are pure fixed overhead and pure fixed selling and administrative costs. And our income is $120,000. That's $200,000 less than our full absorption costing. Why? Because we haven't yet expensed all of that fixed cost. Some of the fixed cost is hiding, as I call it, in ending in in ending inventory, right? So, let's see what that looks like. If the units sold are equal to the units produced, we're going to have equal income under both variable and full absorption costing. However, if we um, if the units that we produce are greater um, then full absorption costing is going to have more uh, income because some of that fixed cost has not yet been expensed as cost of goods sold until it's actually sold out of that ending inventory. And the converse is true. If we sell more than we make, then income is going to be less under variable costing. So, the income under absorption costing then was that 840000 um, Oh, we're going to do a different one. Here, we have um, income under absorption costing includes this, uh, the income under variable costing, plus the fixed overhead cost in ending inventory, and then we're going to back out the fixed overhead cost in beginning inventory. So <laughs> that's going to give us uh, income under absorption costing being less than uh, income under a, a, a variable costing. Okay, I'll come back to that for a second. You can see that here... This $200,000 in ending fixed overhead is the difference between uh, income under absorption costing and income under variable costing. So when you're doing this uh, homework and other calculations in this chapter, be sure you understand why there is a difference between absorption, full absorption costing, and variable costing. And it's always going to be related to the fixed cost in ending or beginning overhead. Beginning and over, I'm sorry, beginning or ending inventory. All right, that is the end of chapter 18. And when we come back, we will do our very last chapter which is chapter 24, on which we will not be tested. But it's great information for you to know as MBA students. Until that time, bye for now.